Welcome to the Voc Talk Cafe by Après Cours, and this is a place where we get to chat live about teaching our trade in today's world. Uh, quick couple of housekeeping notes on the Après Cours FT website. This is an area that has all of our collaborative documents and resources. You can access the recordings and the summaries and the archives. Yeah. You can go to access the meeting agenda and the minutes and the attendance as well as this presentation. Go ahead and sign up for the calendar so you get notifications in your work uh, calendars to see what the topics of the Vox Talk Cafe are. And we also have the resource library that you can access for any of the resources and links that we share during the presentation. Remember, this is a pilot project and your implication and suggestions are really, really important. So definitely speak up if you have ideas, if you have comments, if you have something that you'd like to bring to our attention. Today, food and beverage today. So our, our trade that we're talking with this today is the food and beverage trade. And we're gonna really be talking about the future of the trade and society's perception of the trade. And we have a guest today. So Frédéric G is a food and beverage instructor at PAC. And he is going to be walking us through some, so walking us through some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. So with that, Fred, I turn it over to you. Okay, excellent. I know that some people may join us. Uh, they, uh, they told me before that they would join. So we may have some people come in and during the, the meeting. So, so it says here, um, describe society's perception versus reality of uh, food and beverage. Food and beverage service meaning uh, the restaurant part of the service. We're not talking about the kitchen. It's more uh, all the things happening in the dining room. Discuss where, uh, why uh, there is a lack of clientele because we've had a lack of clientele definitely since the last few years and discuss how the trade can be viable in today's world. Okay, so in this session, so this is what Fred's going to talk about, those goals. Those are our goals today to discuss. And Fred's going to mm -hmm. be giving us a little 10 to 15 minute presentation on the, the theme, talk it, mm -hmm. uh, theme topic. Then we're going to have 45 minutes of interactive discussion. And then we're going to go back to Mark, who's going to present to us a technology and teaching inspiration capsule. The, um, the first, the 15 minute theme topic and the technology capsule is recorded, but our discussion is not recorded. And in this, mm -hmm. I go ahead and take lots of notes and I make those available in the agenda, but to preserve a safe space, we don't record that part. Okay, Fred, now it's your All turn. All right. Okay, so I'm going to uh, expose <laughs> a little bit of the problematic that we have trying to find professional waitresses and waiters in our restaurant. Because a lot of people say that uh, the, the service is crappy in restaurants, not, it's not good. Uh, they complain, but nothing much is done uh, to define what's, what's going on in industry. Why do we have so many problems recruiting people to work in this trade? Um, so as a teacher, uh, I have not seen any students my, in my program since the last five years, but it started about 10 years ago. We were starting to see smaller and smaller classes every year. And there are various factors uh, that we identified to explain the loss of clientele in the food and beverage industry and in the tourism industry altogether, in our restaurants, for instance. First of all, um, I'm going to summarize it. We have a generation uh, problematic. It has changed. The new generation replacing us is not necessarily willing to spend so much time at work in the tourism trade or, in, in fact, in any job. They want decent work hours, a good pay, personal and family life is very important to them. And we all understand this aspect. Did we work too much at the time when we were uh, in, uh, like when, when I was working myself or too many hours? Uh, did this scare these people? Maybe they don't want to do the same anymore. Um, were we a good example to show the next generation uh, about our job, about what we were doing in the industry? And they don't seem to want to repeat the same thing. 
So we may have a problem of perception of the job itself because uh, being a waiter, you know, in North America, it's really considered a summer job as opposed to some places in Europe where it could become a profession. So we really have to work on this. Uh, secondly, um, keep that in mind, but secondly, the technology had a great impact on how young people communicate. And we noticed that many of uh, our young students had difficulty to talk directly to others without using a phone. Uh, I found students had a hard time to deal with customers directly in the dining room. They feel uncomfortable to, to deal with any problem that could arise during a service. However, we have those students who have absolutely no difficulties conversing with clientele, but we have a few of these people only. So only a few people will be interested to directly talk, deal with customers. Okay, most of them, they want to stay in the kitchen uh, and work from there. The number three aspect, uh, the trade itself has always been considered a lowly professional position here, especially in North America. In 95, when I came to Canada to find work in restaurant trade, my very friends told me that I would soon find a real job. It was just a question of time. But I received this as a slap in the face because it was my profession. This is what um, they were not realizing it, that it was what I learned at school. I had chosen that trade. Uh, it, it's the trade that I went to study for. So we need to change that point of view. We need to redefine the métier. And it's not easy to work in the industry because the, the hours are very long. You work while other people are usually enjoying friends and family gathering. And you need also to be physically fit, uh, young, and you need to be smart because it's not for everyone. Let's, let's face it, it's, it's not for everyone. It's a trait of passion only, and that makes finding the right people even more difficult. You have to be a psychologist. You have to be a, a, grandpa, a grandfather, grandmother, you have to be mothers, play the role of fathers and mothers. You have to, you know, you have to be also sometimes doctors, uh, psychiatrists. You have to wear many, many hats in this field. So, and you have to be able to read uh, human beings. And it's not easy for all, uh, for everybody. So the question now is, how can we attract a new kind of student in this trade, new kind of people who would like to work in this trade? There's nothing that we did not try over the years to try a different way to approach new clientele. We tried to connect two, product, two programs together to attract international students, for instance. We also try short programs with teaching of the basics of the trade, and then they could go and work at the same time um, so that people can work sooner in the trade. So we are asking you if you have any ideas or suggestions that we should try out or we sh should look into. And of course, we're open to all suggestions. So we need your input. Maybe there are ways that we could find in order to, to track this clientele. Okay. So I'm going to let you speak now. Uh, okay. Pretty much it's what I, I had in mind right now. That's what happened. <laughs> and okay. uh, uh, I just want to add one thing is that at the moment, we are trying to partnership with the restaurants Lucille's in Montreal. They have a few restaurants in Montreal. And we are going to, to start a, pro a pilot project in the next two weeks where uh, employees from New Seals will come to the dining room, to our class, and I will teach them the basics here during services, and I will continue the teaching in their place of work. So they are very interested. We are setting up a small group to start with, and we'll see if we can tap into this um, part of the trade in order to have a new kind of clientele 
we want to try to to take these people train them properly and we want them to stay in the business okay because most most of my students i would say 90 percent of them are, are not in business anymore they left unfortunately so that's it that's basically what i had in mind um okay so All many right. different well, issues yeah thanks very much fred so we can see that this is i mean this is not a new problem this is definitely something that's existed for a while, but it, it's having an enormous effect, not just on the way you teach, but it's having an enormous effect on the restaurant world and the other students in the center. Because like you said at the beginning, I have to go back, like these two are intrinsically linked, the cooking and the food and beverage. You can't have one without the other. We need each other. But yet we have this issue where we can't recruit students for a bunch of reasons that we're going to go ahead and discuss, uh, but it's affecting the way the cooking perceives the profession as well, where we, is there a realization, I guess this is a question, is there a realization in the student, the cooking students, uh, the necessity of, of having trained front of the house staff, is there a realization in the cooking students that they could also learn this part like this is also an integral part to a piece of their trade and so there are definitely elements that they should be learning um then there's the society part where you you know you're talking about you've tried a bunch of different formulas and we still can't get recruitment so where's that society piece of is the issue do we have to go after the way society perceives the trade, which is like a whole other, like that's nothing we're going to solve too, but it's part of the issue. Um, and then, and then talking with a partnership with the industry partner that you just brought up, uh, that's, that's, that's a really interesting part because now you're getting a little bit of buy-in from the industry partners. So if we go back to our key takeaways, the idea that student recruitment has always been an issue is really linked to the social perception perception of the trade and how we in society like you said uh we see this as well it's not really a real job it's something you do while you're waiting to get exactly home, you know yeah. and that the workforce is changing uh the needs of the workforce is changing and these jobs that are uh we, we uh, that, We've promoted this idea that Monday to Friday, nine to five is, is, is what everybody wants. And that's the way, that's the only way you can have a quality of life. Um, and that may be legitimately true for certain areas, but like, why is that what we're promoting? You know, and it made me think of um, an article that we can, that, that we can discuss in, in our discussion point where um, it was a New York Times article that came up recently um, about uh, um, every year, the, the the best baker in Paris uh, is is chosen to bring the baguettes to the Champs Elysees for the following year. And multiple years in the last twenty years, the bakers have been immigrants. And so the one that was that won the contest this year is a Sri Lankan baker. So he's from Sri Lanka and he immigrated to France fifteen or twenty years ago learn the trade and one of the things he brings up is that it's hard for him to find apprentices to come in and learn the baking trade uh because they don't want to work the hours and like this is the land of of of, of baguette and and they're having this problem so the workforce the perception of of working is changing uh in the workforce and that's having also a big effect so with that we're going to go ahead and stop the recording and we're going to have our discussion. Uh, as a consultant for the RECI, I'm responsible for helping for integration of technology and uh, in vocational training. And I, I try to bring at the end of each of those meetings uh, a two minute thing about something that's tech related that could be pertinent to what we're talking about. And one of the issues that we raised today is the fact that many students are not willing to commit to a full-time schedule, uh, five days a week uh, thing. And I thought that maybe some, that developing some, let's call, let's pull out our big words here, our, our asynchronous learning material 
would be uh, uh, one of the solutions. So if there are parts of the program that the students can do on their own, uh, either on their, uh, uh, in, in any way that they want, uh, that accommodate their schedule, they could reserve more time, more, more quality time for the learning done in the presence of the teacher. And what I wanted to bring today is the fact that um, there's financing available at the Ministry of Education, uh, up to $50,000 to develop, design, and implement uh, either competencies, programs, part of the programs, or even part of a competency that would be delivered there. Could be it's supposed to be... Uh, uh, distance learning, but there's no kilometers associated to the distance. So as long as the student is not in the building in the presence of the teacher, that can uh, apply. So, and we can easily imagine that some exploration or research part of the program could be done totally remotely. And that obviously can be done through uh, uh, the Google platform, uh, the, the Google workspace for education, to Teams, to Moodle, or any uh, other uh, learning management system that is used in your school. So that, that's the option I wanted to bring today. All right, thanks very much, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Any so before we close up our session today, are there any questions about anything related to trades, teaching trades, block talk, anything? We're going to start this project pilot soon and then we'll see what happens and then you'll You'll know more about it in a few weeks. We'll see how it's perceived by people, uh, if there is a possibility that we can continue in the future. So well, at least we'll, we'll be, try something. It'll be interesting, Fred, and it's making me think of a discussion I had with somebody that was that was talking about their experience um, uh, working in music festivals in the summer and coming to the realization that really what they wanted to do was curate experiences for people. And it makes it like a lot of what we're talking about is this, and that's the restaurant industry. I think there is going to be an opening in the future for this idea of restaurants as places to experience uh, social interaction. And like, is, is the trade going to morph into something else than what it is today, where we perceive it as just, you bring my plates. I tell you in order, you bring my plates. Is it going to change into something that combines this notion of uh, project management, cultural development, as well as running a business? You know, I, I don't know. It was, that's just something that came off the top of my head there. Mm -hmm. um, so to continue this discussion, go ahead and go to vt.proceed.ca, join your trade group and either start a discussion thread or respond to one that's currently there. If you need a hand, use the chat feature at the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, go ahead and take a moment to fill out the uh, exit ticket form. Mark, if you dropped it in there, that'd be great. Yes, I will. It is accessible by clicking on the image below or Mark's going to drop in the link. Uh, it really helps us provide feedback to be able to modify the Rock Talk Cafes to meet your needs. If you have okay. an idea for a Rock Talk Cafe, go ahead and fill out the form uh, or drop your idea in the chat. If you need anything, there's my cool picture of Fred. Check out my cool picture of Fred. That's the Matrix. <laughs> Fred in the Matrix. Go ahead and contact us. And there's our list of resources. And the next Rock Talk Cafe is next Monday, October 23rd. And we are going to be talking to Beauty Care. And we are going to talk about uh, the role of social media as a professional development tool. Okay, Thanks thank you coming. very much. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks very guys, much, Fred. Really. That was awesome. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, thanks to everybody for coming.